morning. Welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. But I think you know that by now. OK, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Mary I. But on this day in Tudor history, the 13th of April, 1557, John Bridges, first Baron Shandos of Sudley, landowner, Lieutenant of the Tower of London and soldier, died at his home of Sudley Castle in the Cotswolds. He was aged 65, so quite a good age for a Tudor gentleman. As well as being a landowner and soldier, Bridges was a prominent courtier in the reigns of King Henry VIII, King Edward VI, and of course, Queen Mary I. He served Henry VIII as a Knight of the Body, Groom of the Privy Chamber, Constable of Sudley Castle, High Marshal of Boulogne, and also as a soldier in the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion and in the King's campaign against France in 1544. In Edward VI's reign, he was made Deputy Governor and Lieutenant of Boulogne, and he defended the city against the siege by Henry II of France in 1549. When Lady Jane Grey became Queen Jane after Edward VI's death in July 1553, Jane wrote to Bridges asking him and Sir Nicholas Points to support her against Mary, Mary being Edward's half-sister who was also laying claim to the crown at the time. Jane asked the two of them to provide men and to march with their forces to Buckinghamshire on her behalf. However, she actually only wrote the letter to them the day before she was deposed by Mary, and it wouldn't have helped her much anyway, as Bridges was a staunch Catholic who supported Mary. He and his brother Thomas were among Mary's retinue when she entered the city of London as Queen Mary I. And his wife, Lady Bridges, Elizabeth Lady Bridges, was one of the ladies who attended Mary at her coronation. John Bridges was knighted in October 1553. Now, going back to August 1553, so Mary took the throne in July 1553. So a month later, she made Bridges lieutenant of the Tower of London. And he held that position until June 1554. And he was in that office during uh, the rebellion of Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, Wyatt's Rebellion, and when Lady Jane Grey, that Queen Jane who'd written to him, hoping for his support, when she was imprisoned at the Tower. Bridges played a role in Wyatt's rebellion in early 1554 against the rebels. He threatened to fire on the rebels um, as they tried to enter the city via London Bridge. And um, he caused them, uh, the threat of firing on them, that caused them to try and enter via Kingston instead. They were forced to surrender in the end. Wyatt's rebellion failed. In the contemporary chronicle, Chronicle of Queen Jane and of Two Years of Queen Mary, the anonymous chronicler records that as the rebel Wyatt was brought into the Tower of London, Bridges as lieutenant took him by the collar in most rigorous manner and said, O oh, thou villain and unhappy traitor, how couldest thou find in thine heart to work such detestable treason to the Queen's Majesty? And he told him that if it wasn't for the law that he'd strike him through with his dagger. And in so saying, having one hand upon the collar of the said Master Wyatt and the other on his dagger, shaked his bosom. So he was shaking him and threatening him with a dagger. But he wasn't so harsh with Lady Jane Grey or on Mary the First's half-sister Elizabeth. Um, both of them were prisoners in the tower while he was lieutenant. 19th century historian James Anthony Froude wrote in his History of England of how the iron-hearted lieutenant of the tower, Sir John Bridges, had been softened by the charms of his prisoner, referring to Jane, and begged for some memorial of her in writing and that she left him a prayer book. And in this prayer book, she wrote, 
for as much as you have desired so simple a woman to write in so worthy a book, good master lieutenant, therefore I shall, as a friend, desire you and as a Christian require you to call upon God to incline your heart to his laws, to quicken you in his way and not to take the word of truth utterly out of your mouth. Live still to die, that by death you may purchase eternal life. And remember how Methuselah, who, as we read in the scriptures, was the longest liver that was of a man, died at the last. For, as the preacher saith, there is a time to be born and a time to die. And the day of death is better than the day of our birth. Yours, as the Lord knoweth, as a friend, Jane Dudley. In that very same year, 1554, he was accused of being too lenient um, with Elizabeth after she was imprisoned after being implicated in Wyatt's rebellion. He let Elizabeth walk in the gardens and he also allowed her to receive gifts of flowers from a little boy. And because of that, he was replaced quite quickly um, as her jailer by Sir Henry Bedingfield. However, although he uh, was replaced in that job, he didn't actually lose royal favour. And in April 1554, when Philip of Spain arrived at the English court, of course, Philip of Spain, he was due to marry Queen Mary, um, Bridges was created Baron Shandos of Sudley and granted lands in Winchcombe and Sudley. John Bridges died on this day in history, the 13th of April, 1557, at Sudley, and he was laid to rest in the castle's chapel, St Mary's, which is also the resting place of Catherine Parr, the sixth queen of King Henry VIII. Bridges was married to Elizabeth Grey, daughter of Edmund Grey, 9th Baron Grey of Wilton, and together they had 10 children. Wow, seven sons and three daughters. Their eldest son, Edmund, inherited his father's title and became second Baron Shandos. Also on this day in Tudor history, Sir Thomas More got into a spot of bother, or rather, a lot of bother, when he refused to swear his allegiance to the Act of Succession. And you can find out more about that in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Now you can subscribe by clicking that button there, which says subscribe. You can give me a like and leave a comment and you can also hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.